uh, where you make re reference to these rating systems, the bottom 10 countries for doing business in the world, Chad, Haiti, Central African Republic, Congo. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to my YouTube channel. The four ones today will be, you know, listening to one of our amazing speaker. I believe he is really a man of truth and I believe he has really had his reputation. If you check his YouTube channel, I believe right now he has over 150 million, more than, I think more than 150 million views and he has more than one million subscribers. He's really a man you can rely on. He's a man of truth and I really believe him when he speaks. So today we'll be speaking on Africa is not poor because of colonization. Wow. So I believe Jordan Peterson is really going to do justice to this. So let's start with the video. Well, you, you list here in one of your articles uh, where you make re reference to these rating systems, the bottom 10 countries for doing business in the world, Chad, Haiti, Central African Republic, Congo, Democratic Republic, South Sudan, Libya, Yemen, Venezuela, there's a lovely example, Eritrea and Somalia. And so there are three exceptions in yeah. the African ecosystem. Yeah. Mauritius, Rwanda, Kenya, South Africa, Botswana, and Zambia. You pointed out in your pros prospectus, is it prospectus yeah, article? Yeah, prospectus, prospectus article prospectus of the uh, right, right. Institute. Mm -hmm. Right, that Mar Mauritius is a rising star uh, and Rwanda is in some ways comparable to Georgia. So some of these countries have started to get this right. Yes. And so what's the consequence of that? And what does right mean? What they have understood, what these countries have understood is that economic freedom is at the center for prosperity building. Uh, Rwanda, for example, Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, is explicit about it. He said he wants to be the Lee Kuan Wu of, he wants to be the Singapore of Africa, and Lee Kuan Wu is his model. Now, the dirty mouths are gonna start shouting, oh yeah, see, <laughs> authoritarian, blah, 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 whatever. Me, I wanna talk only about the, um, econ on the economic side. Okay. If you take Lee Kuan Wu and Singapore as your example, okay. then it means that like him, you're going to have to be serious okay. about economic freedom. And that's exactly what he did. That's what Singapore did. When Singapore figured that out, they went on to put in the right reforms to make their environment the most, some of the most business friendly environments in the world, one of the most free markets environment in the world. And you saw the magic of Singapore. Today, Singapore is richer than its ex-colonizer, Great Britain. So when I hear people telling me today, oh, Africa is poor because of colonization, I'm like, please, let's move on from that. Does it mm -hmm. have maybe a tiny percentage in where we are today? Maybe, maybe, and I don't know. Okay. But I know it's not the cause, because if it were many countless countries have been colonized before, and by the way, colonizing one another, is, is humanity's history. Yeah. It just happened that maybe African, Africa has been one of the, the, the last, you know, um, colonized region in the world. So in our psyche, it, it is there and it acts like nothing happened before to others. But uh, flash news, it's the history of the world. Yeah. We've been capturing each other back and forth, all of that. So anyway, but the truth is, um, Singapore, richer than Great Britain today. And then Hong Kong happened. And then because Hong Kong happened, China, China even today happened. Yeah. Because China's like, wait a minute, what, con what went on over there? <laughs> and then China went on to do the exact same thing with its SEZs, the special economic zones, some of the most free market zones in the world. And then look at it happen in communist China, yeah. who when it comes to economics decided that we're gonna do the free market, we're gonna be capitalist, because that's the only way we tried everything else. Yeah. We killed hundreds of millions of people <laughs> and, and, we have, and we have nothing to show for it. But now that we're tired of being disrespected members of society, because guess what, that's the other thing too. Yeah. You wanna be respected in this world? You're gonna have to be among the, mo the prosperous ones. ones for other reasons. Would it be nice, G, that we respect people just because? Absolutely. But that's really not the world we live in. So when China got tired of being disrespected, they're like, maybe we got to build also some prosperity yeah. here because then they're going to hear us. And today, China being one of the, uh, you know, Prosperous. being where it is at, even Hollywood, Hollywood, who tries to tell the world how to think, is being told by China what movies to make and how to tweak stories 
and history in order to be palatable for them. Wow. You see the power that comes with, with being prosperous. The consumer price index has reached yet another 40-year high, and the latest GDP numbers confirm that the United States is in a recession. Now is not the time to have all your money in the stock market or tied to the U.S. dollar. Protect your savings from a highly turbulent economy by diversifying at least some of your investment portfolio into gold and silver from Birch Gold Group. Text JORDAN to 989898 and Birch Gold will send you a free information kit on how to transition an IRA or eligible 401k into an IRA in precious okay. metals. Birch Gold will even help you hold gold in a tax-sheltered account. For decades, investors have relied on gold and silver as a hedge against inflation. Now you can too. With an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands Thousands of satisfied customers mm -hmm. secure your future with gold from Birch Gold now. Text Jordan to 989898 and get real help from Birch Gold today. Again, text Jordan to 989898 to claim your okay. free no obligation information kit on how to protect your hard earned savings with gold. Oh, wow, wow. I believe, I believe this is really getting interesting. You can tell that. Jordan Peterson is really a man of his words, really a man of truth. And believe me, the lady in question that she's really, you know, talking to, you can tell she's actually speaking the truth. Economy freedom is the art of prosperity. If, you know, we, if we, we especially in Africans want to, you know, go to the next level, want to be prosperous, they ask to be economy freedom. And sometimes our leaders, not even our leaders, our nations, they really have to take responsibility to know what to do. You know, it's very wrong to blame everything on colonization because I believe despite the fact that Africans were being colonized, we are not the only ones that were colonized. And there were other countries that are also colonized and today they are doing well. They they are prosperous. If you take example, you look at you look at uh, you look at China, you look at Dubai, you look at a country like India. They came up with a strategy that help the people, that help the citizens, and you can tell right now China is not what it used to be right now. Dubai is not what it used to be right now. India is not what it used to be. I believe. If our leaders can also adopt the strategy in which they use, adopt the policy in which they use, I believe they can make Africa a better place. They can make Africa a more prosperous nation. So let's continue. Let's hear what they are going to say next. What would you recommend concretely to countries like Senegal to get the hell out of the way, let's say, of the people who would, like you, would try to, would do everything they could to try to make it better? I mean, one of the things that happened with India is India established the Indian Institute of Technology, which is a deadly yeah. engineering school. And yeah. a huge number of its graduates went to Silicon Valley, as you well know. Yeah. And many of the successful Indian graduates of IAT started to dump money back into India and yeah. build a, a capitalist infrastructure there, or help build a capitalist infrastructure there. So this sort of thing can really take hold. If you were making recommendations to governments who wanted to get on board and stop being like Chad, Haiti, <laughs> Central African Republic, Congo, South Sudan, Libya, Yemen, and Venezuela, et cetera, what, what concrete step, steps should they take Right. from the bottom up to get the hell out of the way. Bottom exactly, so backwards. two things we've been doing, uh, because I'm, an, I'm a practitioner, as that's my entrepreneurial journey, I'm an entrepreneur, so I practice what I preach, uh, but I also preach, I preach for free markets, and so when it comes to that, I'm, I'm, one of the hats that I wear is as the um, director for the African Center for Prosperity of the Atlas Network, the largest organization in the world of um, free market think tanks around the world. And so what we do there is we work on um, reforms around the world to take down barriers of entry for local entrepreneurs. So that's okay. one thing. But as we mm -hmm. all know, that's a great initiative to take, and we've been making some really um, good advances in uh, in, in uh, many countries, especially in Ghana. We've been making a lot of in progress Ghana. with our partners there, Imani. But um, piecemeal, but that is piecemeal legislation. It takes forever. It is hard as heck. And by the time you made a gain here, you made twenty losses over there, and it's an 
continuous problem. But until we get better, we got to continue at it. So that's one thing we've been doing. And so that's a, a hat I wear working with free market think tanks to try to make it easier for en local entrepreneurs to, 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 to join in the party. Uh, additionally, I'm going bold. I'm going radical. For the past few years, uh, we've been advocating um, an idea for Africa that okay. um, found some of its roots in um, in Latin America. And again, I'm related to the people who are involved in this. My husband being one of the key figures in this movement, a movement called the Charter Cities. Paul Romer calls it like that. He's a Nobel laureate in economics. Um, others calls it, call it the free cities. I like to call it the startup cities. So the best way to think about it, Jordan, and it goes back to what you were talking about earlier when you said, when you use the word operating software, Okay. Most of the Pretty poor uh, developing, most of the low income nations, so meaning back in the days, the way we used to call it is poor nations, are, they have regulations for poverty. They're basically regulated for poverty, okay. meaning the laws, the set of law, poverty. It only calls poverty. And so what some of these fo folks have thought about, looking at the Dubai example, Okay. Dubai just Dubai. recently entered the top 10 of the uh, international financial centers of the world. Wow. And what Dubai did at some point is think about it and be like, on this bare, you know, sand, plot of sand that's technically worth nothing right now, as <laughs> is, this 110 acres of land, mm -hmm. sand everywhere. They're like, well, maybe Sharia law is not the best for business. Um, we got to think about better set of laws for business. Okay. We're talking about only about business, not family law, not anything else but business. And they decided there's got to be something better. And so they looked around, and that's actually when, to take one of the terms you used earlier, they're starting to realize, hmm, common law is actually a better way for business, specifically British common law. British common law. So at that point, and I'm oversimplifying here because otherwise we can totally geek out on it. Remember, this is like one of my latest things that I've been involved in, um, but latest has been the past 10 years, and okay. I'm going to share with you a win. Um, so Dubai is like, we have to adopt British, um, you know, common British law, common primarily law. British common law. We're going to hire retired oh. British common law judges to come and educate the law here, train our own people. And that, along with many other reforms to also become a top center uh, when it comes to the um, and, and in the free market, when it comes to the finances, Dubai. Yeah, well, that British common law, that British common law system. Reach. So it's very, very interesting theologically and metaphysically. So it's predicated on the idea that people have Every individual has all the rights that there are, except for those that are specifically regulated and limited by legal necessity. And then generally mm -hmm. that, that realm of necessity has emerged only as a consequence of disputes between people. So you're free to do whatever you want unless you have a dispute with someone else. Then the dispute is adjudicated according essentially to constitutional and theological principles. Okay. And then a precedent is established and then the whole body of law built up that body of precedence. Yes. Yeah, and it's bottom up, not it's, top down. It's eh? totally right. English common law is a gift from God, yeah. man. No, it's something else. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the key word there when you said bottom up. So common law is so much better for bottom up approaches. And we all know that markets work better in a bottom up approach. And also, when they have to educate the law and um, resolve a dispute, they're going to be much more respectful to the contract that was passed between the two parties than, say, civil law would be, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. anyway, so from this standpoint here, you have Dubai who is not trying to put all of this together and eventually they put a set of laws together that would now be conducive to being a top international financial center in the world. And voila, in less than a generation, in less than 25 years, Dubai completely unrecognizable. Yeah, wow. Wow. What an amazing performance. I think this is really, really, really an eye-opener. You can really tell that Jordan Peterson indeed is a man of his words, a man of truth, is a man that has really gained recognition all over the world because of his wonderful, 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 I don't know how to put it, wonderful. I believe it's a man that has really gained recognition all over the world because of his wonderful work and you can tell that indeed Africans are not poor because of colonization because I believe 
colonization did not start in Africa. Even before Africans were colonized, colonization have been going on. So we can't blame everything on colonization. I believe this is the time our leaders, this is the time African countries really have to start taking responsibilities on what they really need to do. Because you can tell there are really other like a country countries like Dubai, countries like India, countries like China, twenty years back or twenty five years back, no one knows China, no one talk about China, no one talk about Dubai, no one talks about India, but they have really adopt a strategy, they have adopt a policy that really does help them to be where they are today. And they gave example of a country like Dubai. We all know Dubai was back in the day. Dubai was, I don't know how to put it, sorry to say, Dubai was just more like a desert. You see, there, there are empty lands everywhere. There are water everywhere. But right now, you can't say the same thing about Dubai. Dubai is one of the top place I believe everyone will like to visit. It's not because of, it's not because of the way it is right now is because of the leaders, is because of the government, they have really done a lot to improve the nation. And they gave example of using the British common law. Like just like Jordan Peterson say, the British common law indeed is very rich and they were able to employ people from, you know, that understand the British common law to come and teach their people, to come and teach their people and with that, they were able to, you know, implement those policy. They were able to implement those strategy. And look at Dubai right now. I believe Dubai is a place that everyone would like to visit. And same thing goes to China. Same thing goes to China. I think China is one of the top, top, top business place. I believe everyone will like to visit. Everyone will like to do business with them. We like to transact with them. If you look at right now, if you look at even right now in your house, if you look at, you will be able, I don't know if it's your TV, your laptop, your phones, I don't know, maybe your lights, probably I believe one of those things will be from China. This shows how China has been able to, you know, prosper within just few years. This really shows they have done a lot. Same thing goes to India. I love the, I love what, what Jordan Peterson say and what the lady also say that. India back in 20, 20, 20 years back, nobody knows India, but they were able to, you know, you know, strategize. They were able to make their policy. They were able to, you know, sponsor. They were able to educate their people. They were able to sponsor their people abroad. And right now they are giving back to their nations. And I believe if Africans are able to adopt this same strategy, adopt this same policy, take responsibility of where they are right now, so they will be able to, you know, do better. So I believe if the leaders are able to, you know, come up with a policy, come up with a strategy that can help Africa go to the next level, I believe Africa has the resources to be able to, you know, to be able to become a prosperous nation. Just like they say, economic freedom is the center of prosperity. So I believe with this speech, with this speech, our leaders and the African nations, they will be able to, you know, look out for these other countries like China, India, and Dubai, look out for the policy they use, look out for the strategy they use before they were able to become one of the top economic zones. I believe Africa also can become a prosperous nation, a prosperous country. So thank you for the speech and I really love what I heard and I'm looking forward to more reaction from Jordan Peterson. So I would like to hear your comments. What do you like about the speech from Jordan Peterson interviewing the lady and what can you also contribute? What can you also contribute? What do you think need to be done in Africa? What do you think our leaders need to do? What policy do you think our leaders have to adopt? Is it the British common law? Is there any other strategy do you think that 
Is there any other strategy you think our leaders can adopt to be able to, you know, help the country to become a prosperous country, help the nation to become a prosperous nation? So I'll also like you, don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the like button. Do have a nice day. Love you. Bye.